YouTube's new collaboration tool is here, and today we're going to show you how to do a collaboration, how exactly it works when you're inviting another channel, and what kind of data you're able to gather after you've done the collaboration. So without further ado, let's get started. YouTube has made a bunch of updates, and this is one of the first ones where it's starting to act like some of the other channels, like an Instagram or a TikTok, where you can actually have some kind of synergy between you and another account. Can't tell you how many times where I get the question from a client where it's like, how do I best collaborate with a brand? It's like, well, maybe you put it on the homepage, same playlist, you shout out the handle, etc. Now we have a way where it's a lot more actually cohesively working together. So you can see here's one of my videos on the back end of my channel. I'm thinking to myself, you know what would really go well? is I'm gonna go ahead and add a collaboration with YouTube because I'm making so many great free platform updates for them. They should collaborate with me, right? So you would click in the show more section. And then as you scroll down, you see collaboration, grow your audience by collaborating with other creators, and expand your videos, reach to their audiences. Then you can click to learn more and it brings you exactly where I already was in case you wanna see the actual Google support pages on these, which tend to give you the most information. Well, this one, spoiler alert, is lacking significantly. So you go click invite a collaborator and then you'd search for the channel that you want to uh, collaborate with. So I'm gonna search for YouTube, right? YouTube. And then I'm able to give them the option of whether they can view the analytics or not. And this allows the person to see its analytics from the, since it's been published, except for revenue. So if there's a reason you don't want them to see the historical of the video or maybe you're doing a little bit more YouTube advertising than you've uh, let on. Maybe that's the reason to leave it toggled off. But outside of that, it just allows them to get a little bit of an understanding of how that video has performed on your channel. Once again, without revenue metrics. So what you'll do, uh, so I'll toggle it on. I'll say create link and then it creates this link. This is one of the main things I want to call out about this feature that I think some people don't understand quite yet. This is not going to be a spray and pray methodology. This isn't like, man, if I just try to collaborate with, you know, Ronaldo and Mr. Beast and YouTube, that maybe they'll accept my collaboration. I'm I'm off to the, the land of fame and popularity and YouTube growth. That's, that's not how this actually works at all. Uh, you actually have to have a relationship with the channel for the collaboration to be accepted. The way this works is when you make the link, it's, exa it's actually a bespoke link between your channel collaboration invites and their channel. So they're not getting notified. There isn't like a exhaustive collaboration space where like, hmm, maybe I'll click this one. That is probably wise because obviously many people be predatory to bigger creators. I'm sure one of the main emails creators and brands are gonna get is like, please collab on my video. It does not work that way. You have a direct relation. It's the only way these collaborations are going to get accepted. So hopping back over to our screen share, you would, uh, Copy that link, right? Click share. You can, you know, you can copy the collaboration link here if you want to, and then click save. And then you would reach out to that person who has the channel access to accept that collaboration. As you can see, this picture here, it's got, hey, there's no collaboration requests at, at this moment in time. On the other flip side, as you can see here, once you do receive that collaboration, uh, it will look like this and you'll see the video that they are wanting you to collaborate with. It will give you kind of the information that you need to know, and then you can choose whether you want to collaborate with that or not. After you've accepted the collaboration, you have this collaboration tab that goes uh, in the back end where you can see all the videos you collaborate with. You can even create a collaboration shelf on your channel homepage. But let's talk about exactly what happens once you've accepted that collaboration and then we'll get into the data. It's been clear from YouTube that it's going to expand the reach of your video, right? Of course, there's always the option to click subscribe on both of the channels, all five of the channels, how many channels you have in the collaborate effort and you have the opportunity to subscribe to all the channels if you so desire. On top of that, in theory, it will uh, be pushed to the audiences of those channels. Now, this isn't gonna come in the, the subscriber notification bell method, but it will show up in the subscription feed. Now, I don't know how many people actually go there for their content. I don't personally do that myself. The home feature does a pretty good job, but from my understanding that this should come up in the home feature, browse feature, etc., as well. I don't know much more about like the suggested and, and those types of things, but at the very least, you are gonna get at least some 
great uh, front page real estate when it comes to utilizing this collaboration. The one thing that kind of kills me about this tool, if I'm being completely transparent, is that you don't really have a way to see how much the particular channel you collaborated with drove traffic specifically to that video, right? So if I know the videos on my channel and I wanna see the impact that YouTube's video has had in it expanding its reach, there might be some indicators like a massive spike in new viewership. Obviously, if you know your overall benchmark for each video and it's a head and tails above, uh, those could be some good signs, but there's not like a collaboration traffic source that breaks down the channel's audiences that were driven to that specific video. I would love to see that update in the future because I think that'd be really, really impactful. Uh, but at this time, you don't really get that data layer. You can just see the uptick, especially if the reach is so much more than what you're typically receiving, or even if it's like doubled or comparable, you would know based off your benchmarks. Another thing that I wanna make sure is absolutely crystal clear is that the video, if you collaborate with it, is not gonna show up on your video page. That's not how this works. Like I said, you can have a collaboration shelf. You can see on the back end of those collaborations, it's not showing up on your channel homepage. Just to be abundantly clear, it's, it is original to the channel that it's uploaded. What you can see analytically is if you decide to collaborate with a video, so you're not the one who's uploaded, but you decide to collaborate with it, there's one data metric that is bespoke to the collaboration that you can not see on the back end of YouTube Studio. And let me show you what that looks like here. As you can see here, you're getting the historical of the video. It's watch time. So see, I can see all the way back to where it began but the one metric that's specific to you as the collaborator is how many subscribers were generated via this collaboration. This collaboration got you 12 new subscribers. And you can see that here, this is when the collaboration started, and this is how many subscribers has been generated since. So that's right now the main metric you can see when it comes to like, hey, how much did this behoove my channel? It is limited in the data options at this moment in time, but at least you're getting some kind of layer of understanding of the impact that the video has had or the collaboration has had for you. Lastly, we're gonna look at the Google support page. It gives us a little bit of an idea of where the collaboration is gonna show. Can you use them for literally anything on YouTube? How do they work with paid promotions and some of the elements of discovery and revenue that you might like to know? So let's go over here. So as has been stated in the videos, but if you haven't heard already, it's up to five creators, right? Five channels to be added as collaborators in your video. And it can be seen on desktop, mobile, and TV. Not only that, you can do these both for long form videos and shorts. You can invite a collaborator to an archive live stream, but not an active live stream. So this is not something where you can set up a active live stream and have a collaboration happening at this time. I anticipate this probably changing down the road, but until then, it is specifically for long form videos and shorts. Uh, it would be interesting to see exactly how the collaboration impacts a, a shorts performance, um, but I do think probably the more last impact is the long form videos. Paid promotions. When you upload or edit a video containing a paid promotion in YouTube Studio, select paid promotion, then select your brand partner's channel. This connects your video to your brand partner's Google Ads account where they can review your video's performance. If your brand partner uses your video in their ads, the video features your name and your brand partner's name along with the subscribe button for each channel. Once again, create more of a cohesion between uh, these paid promotions. And then last but not least, discovery and revenue. Collaborations are meant to encourage audience growth. That's what they've been saying. Our goal is to recommend the video to the audiences of both collaborators and the channel where the video was posted. However, you may not notice changes in search or recommendations at first. The channel where the collaboration video was posted receives the earned revenue. Revenue is not split between collaborators. So one thing they're calling out is that you might not notice a change and search recommendations at first. So it might take a beat for this to kick in. And that's just something to be aware of that it's not gonna be instantaneous according to this Google support page. Overall, the collaboration tool is a great way for you to connect with creators or brands that you're working with on content. The data component here is outside of you knowing your numbers and the 
perhaps the uptick that you're experiencing or rather maybe no uptick at all. Uh, there's only really the subscribers generated via the collaboration that's bespoke data metric to the actual cohesion and synergy taking place. I would love to see more layers of data, like how much is being driven by the particular channels that you're collaborating with. Because especially if you have a couple, it's hard to determine which one drove the most interest. When it comes to discoverability, you're not getting a new subscriber bell. You're really getting an impact of expanded reach, and it will show up in that subscription tab. It's a tool that I think you need to still be wise about. Like, don't just do it all the time. I think you need to think through what you're trying to do with that collaboration. And you're solely using it as like clout sinking or ways to massively grow your channel at a quick pace. You know, I, I do think that there's something to be said about channels that are built brick by brick, not by splashes. Um, it can happen. I'm not against it, but I think just be careful. You know, I think take an approach that's tasteful and mindful of like you want to grow an authentic audience that cares about you. Overall, I hope you use collaborations. And as I always say, folks, have a great day and happy creating.